Hello, hello. So welcome to the next Delphian School webinar. Uh, today, uh, I'm Thomas Keogh from the Delphian School. Uh, many years I was teaching in the school, and then I've been traveling to help inform parents about the family. So this is actually my first webinar. So we're in this together. You've probably done several, and I'm hoping that you'll make it fun and lively, as I'm going to make it for you. So today's webinar is called Who Makes the World Run? And um, it really has to do with the world around you and the professions that sometimes uh, we don't realize are happening and all the different things that have to go into uh, getting people to work together. Uh, this webinar or this learning guide actually has the purpose to gain familiarity with the kinds of interchanges between people that keep the world running. So it's a beautiful, big concept, and I hope we'll get something good out of it today. Uh, so to remind you, uh, make sure when you um, write an essay or submit something to me that I ask for, uh, put it in the question and answer box and put your name because in some cases your parents have signed up and I may not get to know, I might know their name, but I'd rather have your name so that we can become connected and better friends. And uh, well, here we go. I hope we, have, we both have a great, great time today. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and read the first part of the book. And this section is called The Team. So as usual, I'm going to read it out loud and you guys can follow along. I'm hoping that you printed the learning guide. Um, we will use this and sign it off as we go along. I'm going to sign my name on each step finish, and I'm hoping you'll sign your name when you complete a step. And I hope you can read along with me either in your printed uh, pages or on the screen here. So here we go. The team introduction. For many millions, life in our modern society can be pretty good. There are things to entertain us like TV, movies, music, sports, and games of all kinds, bicycles to ride, electronic devices to play with or use, concerts to attend, and even places to hike. There are things that make life much easier than it was for our grandparents or their grandparents, such as cars, nice highways, jet airplane travel, computers, smartphones, the internet, etc. Lots of things in the world. Modern comforts include air conditioning, food and drink of endless variety, advanced medical care, online shopping with almost anything imaginable shipped to you overnight, and many, many other things that make just living much easier and more comfortable. And no matter what you want to do, there are probably tools, things used to get things done to help you. For example, there are millions of books to learn from computer programs to help you do almost anything and devices of all sorts to help you get things done. Just to make the point about how many things there are, imagine for a moment the life of the caveman, long time ago, huh? About the only thing in the list above that was available was places to hike. And even then, there might be a good chance of being killed by some other person or wild animal while out hiking. The point is that in the long time span from there to now, this huge supply of things that makes our lives easier has come into existence. The good news is we don't, leave, we don't live in caveman days anymore, so. It even can seem that these things are just there, ready to make our lives more pleasant, and that life consists of using and enjoying them. But how did this enormous supply of nice things, nice things come to be? Okay, so that's the first section. Now, what I would like you to do is, from your study guide, you'll see that there's an activity we're going to do. You have to do step a and B here. The first step says make a list of, that has a high number, but I'm going to change the number to just five. So I only want you to think about listing five items you can see in your environment that contribute to your pleasure, comfort, or ability to do things you want to. So take a second, think of those five things. I'm going to put myself back up here. Think of those five things, and I want you to tell Whoever's with you, your parent, your older sister, somebody that's in the room with you, tell them the five things you see in your environment that contribute to your pleasure, comfort, or ability to do things you want to. And I'll give you just a second to do that.
Hello, Sarah. I see you said hello. Hello to you. If anybody else wants to introduce himself and say hello, please do. All right, so assuming you've thought of those five things, now I want you to do is the second portion. It says, rewrite the list in the order of how valuable these things are to you. The top of the list should be items you would find hardest to give up. And the items at the bottom would be the ones that you could most easily do without if you had to. So take those five things. Oh, let's see. Sarah's asked, I accidentally exited out, and what are we supposed to do? That's a great question, and I have, a, I have an assistant, James, he's gonna give me an answer in just a minute, I believe, right? Now make sure to put your answers, by the way, like I said, in the Q&A box. That's where I want you to put your answers. So go ahead and list now in what order these five things are valuable to you. Let's see, Sarah. I'll get you an answer as soon as I can, by the way, on, on your exiting out. Probably just go back to our um, link on the website to reconnect with the webinar. Okay, so here comes in a nice answer. So I think it's Shanae said electricity, home, car, water. All very good, all very good. And I think I'd agree with you on electricity. Actually, that's gonna come up later in this webinar on another day. Uh, but we all know when, we, when the electricity goes out, our life is no longer the same, that's for sure. Um, and so also, one more answer is phones. Phones, and welcome back, Sarah. Thanks for coming back. We're gonna wait a couple more minutes to see if anybody else has some answers they wanna share. Oh, here we go. Claudia says, electricity, it's already hot in Texas. Yeah, I imagine so, huh? You know, if you could get some screens to capture that electricity, uh, that, that heat, then you'd have even more, which would be really nice. Okay, let me kind of see here. Let's see, I'm gonna put my glasses on to help me. Arabella says, devices, cars, air conditioning, refrigerator, and the toilet. Well, that's a good answer, and we need all of those things. And the toilet is very helpful to us in our day-to-day -day activities. Claudia says the phone, laptop, fridge, and plants. So these are things, remember that, you know, it would be hard to give up. What could we, what could we live without at the bottom of the list? What, would, could we, what do we really need at the top of the list? And Chantella says water, very important, home, exactly, and the people in it, I think, electricity, and food. So all very, very true and all very, very good answers. I really, really like those answers. I can remember the last time the electricity went out in my house and it was tough. So we have to learn to not take these things for granted. Okay, I think that's all the answers. If more come up, I'll share them as they come. So thank you, thank you very much for that input. Let's see, and Sarah, oh, here we go. And Olivia, uh, no, excuse me. This is Oliver. Hello, Oliver. It says clothes, house, internet. Now there's a good modern answer. Cars and laptop. These are all great answers. Great, great answers. Very happy to have all of you on this webinar, by the way. Okay, excellent. So I'm going to move on then to the next step. And if your answers, if more answers come in, I'll try to pay attention and we'll just read them as they come. So we're going to go on to the next section, which is called building our things, building our things. Here we go. Okay, great. So building our things, step by step, over hundreds of thousands of years, individual people have come up with things to improve life. Maybe it was a better tool, a better way to build a house, a better way to keep food around so you didn't have to hunt all the time. 
a better way to agree with your fellows not to steal from each other or hurt each other. Or maybe it was a better way to travel from one place to another, a way to communicate in writing, a way to catch or create electrical energy, a way to use electricity to communicate with others, a way to make it safer to go to a hike, and so forth. Or maybe it was a better way to travel from one place to another, a way to communicate in writing. Oh, I think I just said that, sorry. So each time someone took a step that improved life, they made it possible for someone else to discover another step that improved life a little bit more. Of course, there are thousands of examples of this and trying to imagine all the small and large improvement steps for all those examples is enough to make your head spin, mine too. Just think about the bicycle for a moment. How did we get to have bicycles? Here's a list of just a few of the steps. Now, just to let you know, I'm gonna tell you about most of these steps, but I've decided to skip a few of the last ones just for the benefit of our time. Number one, somebody wanted to move something heavy and had the idea that with a round object under it, an item could be moved more easily by pushing it and letting the round object roll under it. Very basic. Two, people made better objects. Three, a wheel is a round object, but it isn't a wheel until it has an axle in the middle that holds steel why the wheel turns. And by the way, I'm sure most of you know what an axle is, but it's often some kind of a round central piece that allows the wheel to turn on it. This way the wheel can spin successfully. Someone had the bright idea that an axle in the middle of a round object really made it useful and a simple axle was invented, the birth of the wheel. The axle didn't work very well and someone thought of a way to make it better. Already we have skipped hundreds or thousands of steps in between. The key point is there's so many things that goes into inventing and creating things with the work of a lot of different people to do it. Five, someone put two wheels on the same axle with a box in between and made a two-wheeled cart that didn't fall over all the time the way a one-wheeled cart did. Meanwhile, someone else got the idea of catching a big animal and training it to pull the cart. But that's a different story with its own steps. Imagine they mean a horse or an ox. So six, Someone put two axles under a big box, one at either end, and made a wagon with four wheels, and someone figured out how to make it steerable. At this seven, at this point, something even stranger happened. Someone decided to hook one wheel in front of another and see if it could be ridden down a little hill without falling over. Maybe it was a game. Maybe it was serious. It doesn't matter. This person had just created the first ancestor of the modern bicycle. So there's a few other examples there, but for time, I'm gonna skip them. You can imagine many, many other steps that went into making the bicycle. So now I'm gonna just bring you to the last couple of paragraphs in this section. So that was a very short version of a very long story with more steps in it than would be easy to count. Even if some of the people involved did several steps, the story surely involves thousands and thousands of people, all working more or less on the same project, even if they didn't think of it that way. They were each just doing their thing, but in fact, they were cooperating, working together in the creation of today's bike. All that was just one item of modern life, the bicycle. Think for a moment about the people involved in the development of the airplane. Oof, a smartphone, very helpful to us these days, an electric car, and on and on. Pretty amazing to imagine, huh? Here we were talking about the bicycle. Now today the bicycle is much more advanced, but the airplane, the smartphone, these things are pretty complicated and involve a lot of different people to help create. Okay, so I hope you got that and are following along well. So let me just, uh, now it looks like some people are putting things in the chat room. If you can just put all of your answers and any questions you have for me in the question and answers, that will be the best because that's the primary place I'm using, well, to see what you have to say, okay? So please put your answers there if you can. All right, let's see if there are even, even more that I missed from before. Uh, just coming to the end here. Wow, lots of feedback, thank you. Okay, great. Okay, great, so now we're gonna to go to the next uh, assignment. So if you follow along on your guide here, we're gonna to go to number four right here. So follow along on the computer or the guy that you printed out. Activity four says, pick one item that you listed in step two above. Make a list of at least five steps that some person or combination of people had to accomplish 
to make it so that item is now available to you in its current form. So you listed several different items like the internet or electricity. So I want you to each pick one item from your list, choose which one, it doesn't matter which, and then make a list of at least five steps that some person or combination of people had to accomplish to make it so that item is now available to you in the current form. Kind of like we were doing with the bicycle. The bicycle had many, many steps. So you guys imagine uh, as realistically as you can, five steps involved in getting that item to you. And I'll give you a few minutes. I'm gonna turn the sound off just for a second, but I'm gonna give you a few minutes to answer. Okay, I'm back with you. Someone said, um, I'm back to you. Someone said you couldn't hear me. I know I muted you just for a second so I could talk with my partner, James, who you can't see. Uh, so I just wanna go back a little bit because we had a couple of answers uh, that I didn't get to read from before, um, if I can. So Jacob said on this five list, washer and dryer, microwave and oven, hot water, power and transportation. Very nice, Jacob, I agree, I really agree. And yes, Annabelle, I agree that all of these things were made by different people to create one thing that most people use today. It's just amazing when we look around ourselves, trying not to take for granted and just assume these things exist, but they came into existence with the hard work of many, many people. All right, so now, now we're going to talk about the answers here. So Annabelle has said cars. Someone decided that they wanted to go somewhere far without having to walk. Yeah, agreed. Very, very agreed. Very true. And I'm gonna say Shanai, I think that's the way to pronounce it, stones to mark where they live. Very true, very, very true. And again, sticks to build walls, again by Shanai. Very good answer, I agree. And no rush when you come up with your answer, just toss it in there. So Claudia said, so the refrigerator, someone had to want a better way to preserve food. He or she realized keeping food cold would help preserve it. I agree. Then maybe a different person created a box with ice in it. Then mini refrigerators were produced. That's true. And now today's refrigerator was created many steps in between, of course. You know, it's really true. And I'll tell you, um, Claudia, you know, I'm not young. And uh, I can remember the refrigerators when I was your age compared to the refrigerators today. And they definitely have become a little bit more advanced. Uh, Shania also says cement for bricks. Very nice. So you're listing the different steps. I agree. So Lila says the phone, the iPhone, electricity needed to exist, battery, the cordless phone, the digital screen. Agreed, very much agreed. Okay. All right, I think we've got through everybody's answers there. Um, and yeah, Shania, I think that you've, you've listed yours individually. You also said a roof made of wood. So thank you very, very much for all your good, good answers. You know, I hope there's a lot that we're reading. In this, in this webinar, there's more to the 
to the learning guide that we're using to really get you to think and get you to take a look at how the different things in the world came about. So um, speaking of that, we're now going to read the next section, which has, I'm going to say it has some good meat to it. You know, there's some good stuff to think about. And uh, I hope you well. Here we go. Okay, good. All right, so this section starts with other aspects of life. And this section is kind of long. Uh, I'm going to read it all the way to the end. So bear with me and think and learn as we go through. So it isn't just things that got developed. Let's go back to the idea of a hike for a moment. Imagine back to times when people lived in small groups. Now imagine the different groups were somewhat hostile, which means they were kind of angry or upset or they would tend to fight attacking and fighting each other. Perhaps most of the people actually wanted to live peacefully, but some prefer to live by violence and stealing. This kind of thing is a pretty common story in the history of mankind. In an environment like that, you can imagine that taking a hike was a pretty risky business. How did it get to the way it is now, where hikes are pretty safe from violent groups of people wanting to whack you over the head and take your stuff? Remember, we're referring back to the cavemen, right? We're, not, we're no longer cavemen, but we're referring to that time. The development of what we today call law and order in a fairly safe environment, including respect for others, people's lives and belonging, is a big improvement. Getting as far as we have, I'll say this again, getting as far as we have toward creating a safer environment is such a huge development that it makes the development of the bicycle look pretty simple in comparison. In other words, the development of law and order has involved the help of many people many more than the bicycle did, and over huge territories of the earth. You could spend years just trying to list these steps and it would still be incomplete. But here are a few for illustration. So here we're talking about a much bigger concept and something that you can't really touch unless you go pick up the books of law that are in the libraries. So one, an agreement among people that what a person created, caught, or grew belonged to him or her personally to control as desired by that person. This is such a difficult development to achieve that lots of people on Earth, even now, don't have this agreement. Hmm. Just imagine the number of people that have worked to get such an agreement among people. Two, the idea of writing down laws so that everyone can be treated the same. Instead of people just making up rules as they go along, you could almost tell the story of humankind by just talking about the different sets of laws, often referred to as codes of laws. These are laws that have been made up to try to establish law and order. These ideas and codes were created by individuals or groups cooperating with each other, working together to solve some situation where people weren't getting along. Often individuals and groups worked to improve rules other groups had tried earlier. In a way, these later groups were cooperating with groups that had tried to solve similar problems at an earlier time and often in a different part of the world. Three, having judges who could impartial, I'll get to you again, having judges who could be impartial, fair, not choosing sides and settling disputes. And the dispute is like an argument when someone has a, a disagreement. So they would settle disputes, crimes, and punishments. This was as an, an important development. It meant that the judges didn't have something to gain for themselves by deciding one way or the other. They could be fair to both sides. Good people, the world over, have worked on this for a very long time and are still working on it. Some places have it and some do not. All right, so a little bit more. Take a moment and consider the number of people working one way or another to bring about these improvements to mankind. Without these people, it might still be dangerous to take that hike, and a lot of other things would also be very dangerous. Getting law and order in a safe environment is something we all want, but like other things, it has created, I'll give it, it has to be created step by step by good people having ideas and making improvements, one step or a few steps at a time. These are examples of improvements to life that aren't just things or objects. Many, many such examples exist. Consider music and what a huge collection of ideas about music that have been developed and collected over the years. The list of these sorts of improvements and developments is probably as long as the list of things and objects that have been developed. And here's the last section. Your team. We have barely scratched the surface on this subject, but the overall point is that we have the lifestyle we have today as a result of the contributions over a long period of time 
by an enormous number of people. All of this huge collection of tools, comforts, protections, ideas, rights, freedoms, and ways of doing things that these people have helped bring about is what we call our culture. And you're a part of that culture, and I'm a part of that culture, and your parents are a part of that culture, as we all know. The poet Robert Frost said in a beautiful short poem, The Tuft of Flowers, men work together. I told him from the heart, whether they work together or apart. Kind of beautiful. So whether its members know it or not, humankind is a team that has put together the cultures we have. Perhaps you hadn't thought about it before, but this is your team. You are already on this team and you will benefit from it. And no doubt you will contribute to it as you move on with your life. Wow, that's a big concept. I like it though, I like it. All right, let me get back here where you can see me. So, all right, so now we have another activity. Uh, I, hope that, I hope that section makes sense to you. Uh, you know, you have your own copies of these guides. You're always welcome to review it again and to let it um, sink in or to digest a little bit better uh, because there are some really big concepts there. And the main idea is that you're a part of life. You're a part of your family. You're a part of culture. You're a part of your city. And as you get older, there's going to be lots of ways that you get to contribute to that. All right, so we're gonna do now another activity. Um, if you pick up your, your little learning guide here, it's activity number six. And this activity says, think of just one thing in our culture or environment that you might want to contribute to the improvement of. Even if you don't know right now how you might do it, write down your thoughts about it in a paragraph. Now, if you want, it can be a short paragraph or just a couple of sentences, but the idea is think of something in your culture or in the environment that you want to contribute to the improvement of? How do you want to make it better? You may not have all the answers, but give me your thoughts and tell me what, what you'd like to work on and how maybe how you might want to improve it. Okay, and to remind you, throw your answers into the question and answer section. And I will, I'm going to mute myself just for a second and I'll be right back to you. Okay, guys, so I'm back with you. Um, I'm going to give you a couple more answers that came in before, but it looks like that we have one of our attendees asking, where can I get the guide? Where can I see what you're reading from and where can I get the checklist? Well, your parents had an email that told them about the webinar, and in that is a link where you can click it, and it gives you not only the learning guide that we have, but the book that we're reading from. So if you want to try to click that now, so it's easier for you to follow along, great. Or when we're done, you can click it and print it out and have a copy of it, okay? So sorry that you weren't able to access it earlier. All right. Um, let's see. Jacob, I'm just going to answer. You had an earlier answer here when we talked about how did, what were the five steps involved or some of the pre-steps for one of, the, one of the things we have around us. You said microwave oven. One, someone wanted to heat food without a fire. Two, electricity. Three, microwaves, exactly, because that's a different form of energy. Four, the control pad. And five, the frame. All very good. You know, it's amazing when I think about it too, Jacob, because those are just the five things you've picked. And if we could have a discussion over a soda and maybe coffee for me, we could probably find 20 other little things that go into just making the microwave. All right. Okay, good. So it looks like now we have answers coming in. Uh, here's one before from Cassidy, by the way. Uh, mattress. One, someone wanted a soft surface to sleep on. Two, someone got a soft thing like straw to sleep on it. Then they got a better material like feathers. 
And then we made one out of fabric, and then someone finally put springs or box springs in it to make it strong. Very true, Cassidy. Very, very true. All right, it looks like you found the textbook, so I'm very happy for you. That's very good. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got some great answers coming in. Wow, you guys, I really love this. You make me, I'm gonna be honest, a little bit emotional because I don't teach now. But here I am teaching and I'm getting essays and feedback from kids, which is really beautiful. So uh, Cassidy says, in answer to our question, our, our question I think is, think of one thing in our cultural environment that you might want to contribute to the improvement of, and how could you do that? Share me your thoughts. All right, so Cassidy says, the conservation of natural areas. Wow. I want to help create more natural reserves and parks and hiking trails so that there is more nature for people to enjoy. Wow, Cassidy, that's beautiful. Makes me think of we've recently been working hard on our campus to do the exact same thing, to, to make trails and to provide different activities on the 700 acres that we have up here. Claudia says, I would like to contribute to my school. Every teacher, parent, and student helps make it a better place. By doing my part, I can help create a nice place to go to. Friendly teachers create classrooms students want to go to. Students help by studying, being kind, and supportive. Oh, can it make me cry? That's beautiful. I'm sorry. That's just beautiful. Thank you for sharing. And it's really, really true. Okay, Lily says, I would like to contribute to and improve our education in our public school system. Oh, that's beautiful, too. That's a, that's a very broader way of sort of talking about what Cassidy said, but um, generally that could be improved. I like it. Well, maybe if you continue your education really strongly, you can become a teacher in the public schools or a principal, and then you can control all the teachers. Uh, so one of our attendees said, the teacher says, oh yeah, that's fine, sorry, okay. All right, Shanai says, visiting a doctor and using a computer. Another, another attendee, I don't see your name, but that's fine. It says, the conservation of national parks, similar to our other answer. Tourism is destroying nature and artifacts that are important to our life. I want to help conserve those. And then Sarah says, I want to create a clinic. I want to find or found a clinic for the less fortunate all over the world and work there too. That's beautiful, you know, and the question could just be then, you know, what services do you want to provide for them? You know, how would you like to help them? And there's so many different things there to imagine. Okay, well, I think that's all the answers. Let's see how we're doing on time. We got a few minutes still. Great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, see if we can get through our last section. And um, here we go. It's section number four in this same, uh, same book. So go ahead and go back to your book. And we're going to now read... Let me get it there. There we go. So it's a section called How the Team Plays. Okay, go. So when we think of humankind as a team that has, over a long span of time, developed or evolved what we call our culture, it is perhaps natural to ask why or how did that happen? Did someone get all together? Did someone get them all together and agree on a plan? Of course, that's a silly question, but it is fairly clear that there was some sort of cooperation among the members of humankind over those thousands of years, whether it was planned or not. For instance, in all the long line of steps in the invention and development of the computer, individuals used the discoveries of those who went before them. This is a kind of cooperation, even if it is not really all together. Also, if people wanted to sell their computers, they had to pay attention to what people wanted to buy. This is another kind of cooperation between people. And suppose a person needed a special tool to build a new version of the computer and someone somewhere else made such tools. If the computer developer gets the tool from the tool developer, they are cooperating, although they likely don't know each other at all. If the computer developer got some help from a scientific theory worked, on, worked out 100 years ago, there was a kind of cooperation between the person working now and the scientists of 100 years ago. After all, cooperation means co, together, co-operation or working together. Even if these people are not physically together, there is a connection between them that affects the actions of one or both of them. It is because of this kind of cooperation in its millions of ways <clears throat> that we can think of mankind as a kind of team 
Let's dig a little deeper into how this team plays and how it works and why it works. All right, and one more section here for today called How the Team Plays, Simple Basics. We start off by getting simple. There are two basic ideas that can help explain why the team works. One, people want things. They have always wanted things. For instance, maybe they wanted a better club to whack wild animals with, or they wanted a house instead of a cave. Maybe they wanted a better sailing ship or a good plow horse. Maybe they wanted to hear an orchestra play the new Beethoven music. Maybe now they want a hamburger or a pair of pants. Maybe they want a trip to Antarctica or guitar lessons. Maybe they want the latest cell phone or a new carpet. Sure there's a lot of choices out there, huh? Two, people like to do things that interest them. Maybe something interests them because they are curious and want to learn. Maybe they are interested in helping others. Maybe they are just interested in entertaining themselves by doing some particular thing. People are interested in a lot of different things and activities. As we will see with some examples, each of these ideas by itself, by itself helps explain a large part of how and why the team works. And often, these two ideas can work together at the same time, and that makes the team better. Okay, good. So that's the end of that section. Now, let's see. I think we have time for this last step. Hopefully we can do it. So what I want you to do now is the last activity for the day. Um, it's activity number two. So we're in section B, activity number two here, and I'm going to read it out to you. So the first one is, think of an adult outside your school who you know wants something. Choose a situation where the thing wanted is quite important to the person. Explain exactly as you can what this thing is that the adult wants. So it's just very simple. All you have to really do is answer this for yourself, and then you can answer in my Q&A box. So it's think of an adult you know outside your school who wants something. Choose a situation where the thing wanted is quite important to the person. And then explain as you can, just tell me what it is. And then the second step is, you can think of someone who has very interested in some kind of activity and does it a lot of the time. And just tell me what that activity is. So we're looking at a thing, and then an activity. And you can just shoot your answers right into the question and answer period. And this will be our last assignment for the today, by the way, guys, as we are soon wrapping up at a time. Wow, here come some more answers from before, which is beautiful. While you guys are thinking with these, I'm gonna answer some of these other answers if they're still here. Let's see, no, those are done. Okay, good, so we are up to, up to date. So go ahead and um, do that assignment, and when your answers are there, I'll read them to you briefly. And excuse me, I'm gonna take a drink of water. All right, I'm back with you guys, and I'll just patiently wait for your answers to this last activity. And here they come. So Claudia says, a Mercedes and working out. No, ah, that's good. That's very good. I don't have a Mercedes. I have a Subaru, Claudia. <clears throat> working out is important. I love to work out, and I, I do it a little bit less than the last two months ago. So Shanai says, come to school on time. Come to school on time and then attendance office. Okay, very good. This is very true. So again, we're looking at <clears throat> what is something that another person wants? What does somebody want that's quite important to that person? And then something that they're interested in. A teacher wants to teach and then homework. That's very true as well. Very, very true. All right, we've got a couple more minutes for you guys to get your answers in, and then we've got to wrap up so that we're on schedule for the next webinar. The next webinar from the Delphian School in Oregon. Which, by the way, you can, you can see the schedule of webinars, um, I think both on the link that your parents have, as well as on our uh, Delphian website as well. So Arabella says, a guitar, very nice, and teaching. 
a guitar in teaching. Makes a lot of sense, Arabella. Lila says, my sister wants a car because she likes going places and doesn't always want to wait to borrow the parents' car. Ha, huh. well, your sister must be about 16, huh? 16 or 17, huh? And she's interested in shopping and doing activities like meeting her friends and going to the park. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, we got a couple more here we can get through. So Sarah says to be their own boss and be the leader of others. That's true, that's very true. And then Chantala says a piano and music. And you've got to have the piano to then invest and learn and do the music successfully. Okay, a couple more answers here. Cassidy, good, we have time, right? Let's see, yeah. So Cassidy says an electric car that is nice and new, ooh, like a Tesla maybe, huh? And then playing music and singing. Great answers, guys. Cassidy, thank you for that answer. Very, very nice. And here comes uh, no name, but a lightsaber. Oh, this must be a Star Wars fan. I know somebody in my room that loves Star Wars, and my son loves Star Wars as well. So I love it. A lightsaber and then binge watching Star Wars. Okay, I don't know if that's I don't know if that's you or somebody you talk to, but either way, that's okay with me. Okay, and I can't give a name because it says uh, no name. This is a person. Maybe it's Luke Skywalker for all we know, right? Or who knows? Okay, great guys. Well, those are all the answers that you shared here. Um, I'm going to move on because we got to kind of wrap up. So, a couple of things. Thank you for attending today. Now, if you have your learning guide, which uh, either printed out or on the screen, I'm going to give you a homework assignment, and I'm giving it because. Later, I'm coming back to you on Friday for the second half of this. And in order to do the second half of this uh, webinar and get through this learning guide, you got to be good if you get this homework done successfully. The homework is not hard. It's just steps on this page here, step two, steps three through six. So there's two different sections to read and two different activities. And if you can do the activity and then email me your answers into events at Delphian.org, then I will be able to see them and I can comment back on them when we come back um, to class on Friday. Or if you wanna just write your answers down and then as soon as we start up, you can toss them into the question and the answer period, that will be very helpful as well. Okay, so thank you for attending. Don't forget to take a look at uh, the rest of the schedule so you can stay um, active while you're home and you can keep your mind racing and your ideas growing, even while you're home having fun with your family and parents. So thank you very much, and we'll see you on Friday.